going to be trying out four new keto-friendly crock-pot meals this week. Hey guys, so I am sharing the four crock-pot meals that I made for dinner for my family of six this past week. We just finished up the fourth one and I'm pretty sure I got all of it on camera, but when I was moving some files over, I might have lost part of meal number three, but I'm going to include all the footage I have and I'll just add some text or something if I lost some of the footage, but all of them are pretty good. I don't know if I would make them all again. I think the last one, number four, was probably our least favorite, but all in all, I love making crock pot meals. They are super easy and relatively affordable depending on what all you're putting in it. So I will have all the recipes down below, but let's get into some of my dinners this past week. Crock pot meal number one is bacon cheeseburger casserole. So I've got my crock pot and all of my ingredients here, and it sounds pretty yummy. I'm excited to make this. So you will need two pounds of ground beef. I already have mine cooked. I just use a little bit of salt, pepper, garlic powder, and onion powder when I'm cooking my ground beef. So those are the seasonings I have on that. Then you're going to need half a teaspoon of salt, half a teaspoon of pepper, and then these cans back here, they are both 10.5 ounce. One of them is cream of mushroom soup. The other one is cheddar cheese soup. Then you're going to cook up half a pound of bacon. And then before you crumble it, pull out two pieces because you're gonna need two pieces of crumbled bacon separated from the rest. So that's why I have two bowls here. And then half an onion, thinly sliced, mine aren't, thinly sliced, but it's a sliced onion. And then one to two cups of shredded cheddar cheese. I never ever measure my cheese, especially if it's saying just put it over the top. I kind of just eyeball it. So I've got my big old bag of cheddar cheese here that I always get from Costco. So I've already cooked my ground beef. If you guys have not, you're gonna need to cook it. And then we are going to put it together in the crock pot. All you're gonna do is toss your meat in, all of your bacon, except for the small pieces that you pulled out. So I'm gonna to toss in this bowl of bacon and both cans of soup, and I'm going to mix those together. Okay, so there it is all mixed up and then you're just going to take your onions and layer them on the top. If you have someone who doesn't like onions, you could totally maybe just do half of it or if all of you guys aren't big onion fans, you could omit them very easily because I'm just setting them on top. Or if you don't like sliced onions, you could also easily dice this up and mix it into your beef mixture. You don't really have to lay it on top of it like I'm doing here. All right, last step before I start the cooking process is just layering or topping it with cheese. So I'm going to just sprinkle it on top. Like I said, the recipe calls for one to two cups, but when it is, when the cheese is like this, I never ever measure. I just top it to my and my family's liking. So that looks good to me. I am going to get the top on and cook it on low for four hours. Now my crock pot does not have a four hour um, setting for low, so I'm just choosing eight hour, but I'll set a different timer or just keep a track of the time and check it at four hours and it should be ready to go. Okay you guys, it has been just over four hours and that is what it looks like. It smells, I mean, I, I smell cheeseburger. <laughs> That's what I smell, so I'm excited to give it a try, but now I'm just going to put in a little bit of pepper on the top here, 
and some salt. And the bacon. And then I am gonna go ahead and just mix all this in. Um, you could use the salt, pepper, and bacon to you put it on the individual dishes, but that's not what I'm gonna do. I'm going to mix it all up, and then I'm going to serve it up, and I'm gonna show you what the finished plate is going to look like. Okay, so I made a plate. We are all eating the same thing, my family of six, and this is the low carb cheeseburger casserole or crock pot cheeseburger casserole and then i just made some cauliflower rice with salt pepper and there are slivered almonds in there and then i mean i don't know about you guys but i can't have a cheeseburger without pickles so we do have some clausen pickles here so i added one of those and that is how we are eating this first crock pot meal crock pot dinner number two is a very easy taco soup again this recipe is very keto friendly so i have the recipe that is linked down below um, might look a little bit different but this is the way that i'm making it just because i didn't want to go out and buy anything extra i try to use what i have on hand already just to keep our budget grocery a little bit lower than we would, you know, we normally spend. So this recipe calls for two pounds of sausage, but I had one pound of sausage, and then I had already had one pound of ground beef. So in here, there's one pound of ground beef and one pound of sausage. Then you need two eight ounce boxes of cream cheese, two cans of chicken broth, which equals to four cups, because you need four cups, two cans of Rotel, I just have, you know, this is the Walmart version. Great value, original diced tomatoes with green chilies. It is Rotel, just not the Rotel brand. You need two tablespoons of taco seasoning. I buy my taco seasoning in this big one just because we are constantly using it. And then you will not need the cheese until the end. This is everything you're putting in the crock pot and the cheese is for topping the soup at the very end. But you are going to want some shredded cheddar cheese because you can't have taco soup without sh shredded cheddar cheese. I mean, come on. So first I'm going to put the cream cheese, the two cans of tomatoes and green chilies, and the taco seasoning into the crock pot. Now that I'm thinking about it, I don't really think it matters how you put these things in the crock pot. I was reading the directions and it says to put these three things in first, then put in your meat and then the chicken broth. And I'll still put those in that order, but I really don't think it matters because you're mixing it all together and cooking it all together. So I'm gonna go ahead and keep on opening my cans, get set up, and you guys are gonna see me put everything in the crock pot. All right, here we go. So I did use my spoon just to chunk up the cream cheese a little bit so it makes it easier for it to melt all the way. And all you're gonna do is now you can cook it on low for four hours or high for two. I'm cooking it on low because it is still the afternoon. Just finished lunch. So I'm going to do that. I'm gonna put the top on and then I am going to come in. It does not say this in the recipe, but I am gonna come in and give it a stir every now and then just to make sure that the cream cheese is melting and getting distributed evenly throughout the soup. So I will see you guys when it is ready to serve up. Okay, dinner is ready. I already have a bowl made. So here is what it looked like looks like and the cream cheese is completely I mean no problem at all melting and incorporating over the past four hours turns out really good it smells delicious so what I did for my bowl 
is I scooped some out. I have like a little handful of cheddar cheese shredded or shredded, sprinkled over the top. Um, and this is what I'm gonna have for dinner. Now I do have some chips left over and since I am low carb, low, low sugar, I am not going to be eating this because this is definitely not keto friendly. But I do have little kids, so I am going to let them have the option of eating it like mommy or if they want to maybe crush up the chips and add that in as well. Um, especially because you know the crunch does help with when you have little kiddos just the, the change in texture So I'm gonna have let them have that option But overall it smells really good and I'm excited to give this a try for dinner tonight number three on the crock pot meals We are having steak bites and I do not use crock pot liners every time but I'm doing all these meals in one week and I'm having crock pot dinners four nights in a row and I'm tired of cleaning my crock pot or scrubbing it. So I think with the sauces and stuff, this might leave a little bit that I'm gonna have to scrub. So I'm I'm opting to use the kitchen liner this time. Um, if you guys do not did not know that crock pot has slow cooker liners, um, I will leave a link down below because you can find them on Amazon. Sometimes I have a hard time finding them in the store, so normally I get them from Amazon. They are BPA free, and these ones fit three to eight quart round and oval cookers, so it's pretty universal right there. So I've got my liner in, I've got my crock pot plugged in, and then the ingredients are pretty simple. You're going to need three to four pounds of round steak cut up into little bites or cubes. Then half a cup of beef broth. So I already have my broth measured out. I just have that there so you can see which kind I'm using. Um, one tablespoon of minced onion, one teaspoon of garlic powder, half a teaspoon of salt, half a teaspoon of pepper, and then four tablespoons of butter um, sliced up. So I've already got mine sliced up so it's really easy to just put it together. So all you're going to do is you're going to Put your steak into the crock pot, like so. Then you're going to pour the beef broth over top. I'm gonna get all the seasonings in there and then I'm going to arrange the butter slices on top. All right, I have all the seasonings in there and the butter just kind of placed all around. So last, you're just going to set your lid on top and you can cook it on high for four hours or low for eight hours, which is what I'm going to do because I am starting it early enough in the morning. And steak bites are done, and I am gonna tell you, my house smells so good. That's definitely one of my favorite things about cooking a crock pot meal. Um, and I don't think I noticed the smell on the other two as strong as I do for this one. So I figured I would mention that. The smell coming home, if you do not work from home and you're, you come home at the end of the day, your house is gonna smell amazing if you have a crock pot cooking. Um, and for me, when I leave to go pick up my kiddos from the bus stop and I come back home, that's when it really hit me in the face. So this smells really good. I actually already made my plate, so I'm just gonna show you how I am serving it up. So I steamed some broccoli and then in order to keep some of the broth and like the, the little gravy mixture, I just scooped out the steak bites with my spoon and just plopped it right down on here. Now what you could do if you do want this to be more of a gravy consistency is you can take all the steak out and then put in a little cornstarch, you know, whisk it up a little bit and wait until it gets a little thicker and then you could have it with as a gravy, um, depending on if you are, you know, no keto, serve it over rice or mashed potatoes. But since we are eating low carb, I am just gonna have it with some broccoli, but it does smell pretty good and it looks scrumptious. Okay, so this is meal number four and it is called crock pot creamy Tuscan chicken. So I already have my chicken in my crock pot and I did put it on a skillet and brown it on both sides just a little bit with some butter um, to 
keep the moisture in while it's cooking in the crock pot. So I have my two breasts hanging out in the crock pot and this is all you need for the rest of the recipe. So you're gonna need one jar, about 15 ounces of Alfredo pasta sauce with roasted garlic. So I just have some Newman's own there. And then um, the recipe calls for one jar or seven ounces of sun-dried tomato strips. And I found them already cut into strips so I didn't have to do anything and it was a three ounce bag. So that is about half a cup right there. Then I have a quarter cup of grated Parmesan cheese, one teaspoon of Italian seasoning, and one cup of chopped fresh spinach. So all I'm going to do is take all of these ingredients except for the spinach. So I'm gonna take the Alfredo sauce, the sun-dried tomatoes, the Parmesan cheese and the seasoning and mix that all into a bowl and then I'm gonna pour it over the chicken. I'm gonna put my spinach back in the refrigerator because I do not need that just yet. All right, I got my top on. The sauce is all over the chicken there, and I am going to cook it on high for four hours. So once this four hours is up, I will be back and show you what I'm going to serve this with. And crock pot meal number four is served. This looks really good. Now we have had zoodles before, and they are pretty yummy, but this is the first time that we are having this Alfredo chicken, and it looks pretty good. I was assuming that it was gonna be a little bit more white, but I think because of the sun-dried tomatoes and the spices, it kind of turned a darker color. I It definitely cooked longer than I intended it to also, just because I had things going on and I had to leave it in here a little bit longer. But all in all, it smells really good and I have a feeling it's gonna taste really good also. All right, there you have it. There are four new crock pot meals for you guys to try. If you've already tried one of these, or if you're looking forward to trying them, let me know down below. If you guys like crock pot meal videos or me sharing what we're having to eat and all that good stuff, hit that thumbs up button and I will continue sharing them. If you are new to my channel, I would love for you to subscribe. I do quite a lot of cooking videos along with some other things here on this channel. So hit that subscribe button and I will see you guys tomorrow. Bye.